Imagine you have a huge number of documents. These could be articles, newspaper clippings, reports, blogs, basically any block of text. The point is there are millions of these documents. To organize these documents, what you want to do is determine which topics are associated with each document. Is a particular document about food, sport, religion, or all three? Now, one way you can solve this problem is by reading these millions of documents. It's not a bad option. You will learn lots in your life, but you probably will never finish. Hence, you want to use some automated computational approach. This is where latent Dirichlet allocation, LDA, for topic modeling can be really useful. So let's just dive straight in and see what LDA is all about and how it can solve this topic modeling problem for us. To make things easier to understand, let's imagine we have three documents. In a more general mathematical notation, we have capital D number of documents. And we can use lowercase d to indicate each specific document. Let's now say, in our example, the specific topics we care about are the following four. Science, sport, hope, and deceit. Again, in a more general mathematical notation, we can say we have capital K number of different topics. And we can use lowercase k to indicate each specific topic. Looking at document one, the idea of a long road and the mention of um, seasons suggests we'd ultimately want the LDA approach to assign topics sport and maybe hope. Moving on to document two, here it mentions tennis and lying. So we'd hope to assign the topics of sport and deceit in this case. Finally, for document three, we are talking about bird species. So the only likely topic for this document is perhaps science. That's great. We can solve our task as a human. But if we want to use LDA, we do, however, need to do introduce a bit of maths again. Instead of having a fixed topic label assigned to each document. Why don't we learn an entire distribution of topics for each document? So, for example, let's let theta1 be the distribution over topics for document 1. We'd eventually want theta1 distribution to be equal to something like 50% sport and 50% hope, i.e. theta1 is equal to 0. 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0, with the elements of this vector being consistent with the topic indices indicated here. Similarly, then we would want the distribution of topics for the second document to be mostly about deceit and a bit about sport too. So we would hope that LDA would give us something like theta 2 is equal to 0, 0 0.2, 0, 0 0.8. Finally, we can say for document three, it is fully about science. So we'd hope to learn the distribution theta three is equal to one zero zero zero. If we want to define these theta vectors in a concise mathematical notation, we can say each theta d is like a random variable that we eventually want to learn drawn from some Dirichlet distribution. If you aren't familiar with Dirichlet distributions, Imagine that a Dirichlet distribution just means that any random variable vector drawn from this distribution must have its elements of sum to 1, i.e. behaves as a probability mass function, as is what we want for each theta d here. OK, great. We now know that our objective is to learn each theta vector, and we are then done. But it isn't still clear how we achieve this. The LDA approach makes the assumption that each word in each document belongs to a specific topic. To model this idea, we say that each topic K has its own distribution over the entire vocabulary of words. For example, 
let's consider what we mean by this for the first topic, science. Let's imagine the first few words in our vocabulary are argon, ball, and cry. Let's let beta1 be the probability distribution over words for the first topic, science. We know intuitively that if our topic is science, then the probability of a word being argon is higher than ball and cry. So we would expect the start of this vector to be something as shown. Continuing for other topics, we would expect their distributions to have higher probabilities associated with different words that tend to come up with regard to their respective topics. Hence, we now have these new set of probability distributions, beta k, to learn for each topic. To be mathematically concise, we can again say that these distributions are also drawn from some Dirichlet distribution. So, we now have sufficient variables defined to actually solve our problem using the LDA approach. We have objectively reduced our problem to learning the optimal theta and beta probability distribution vectors given the documents we have observed. So, let's start trying to learn these. So, let's write down our objective mathematically as a maximum likelihood inference problem. The optimal beta and theta vectors, indicated with the hat, are the ones that maximize the probability of all observed words in all the documents, where w n d is the nth word in document d. In the LDA approach, we can assume that each word is independent of the other, which means we can separate the joint probability of all words written here as products of probabilities of each separate word. Note we also remove the dependencies on all unrelated theta vectors for a specific word, i.e. word WND will only require theta D and no others. Now, let's look at the probability of a particular word WND and write it in a manner that is useful to us. Let's introduce some latent variable Z, which we will let represent the topic index assigned to a word. This is useful because we can now say that the probability of some word w given this topic z can be found exactly using beta z, which if we remember is the distribution over all words for topic z. Thus, to benefit from this relationship, we can apply reverse marginalization on the probability of each word to introduce the latent variable z. And now, we have mathematically concise solution to our inference problem. We just have to find the maximum of this expression with respect to all the theta and beta vectors. Unfortunately, in practice, this expression is too intractable to optimize computationally. The biggest problem is that we have three sets of iterators, iterating n over every word in the document, iterator d over every document, and we have, finally, iterator Z, iterating over every topic. This gives a lot of combinations. There is a way to get around this computationally, and that is where one will enter the world of Gibbs sampling. However, a dis discussion on Gibbs sampling is for another day. And that is all for this time.